My first sculpture class was in Rochester, New York when I was 10 years old. It was at that moment that I knew who I was and what I was going to do. Art is the, it's kind of an expression of your soul, of your experiences. And I had been taking uh, years of dance class before then, from the age of four. So I really love dance and I really love sculpture. You know, I mean, what is sculpture but dance, you know, in a moment in time? when I came to Washington and GW, and it was really the revolution years, 68 to 72. I have always been a truth to power person. I have never been afraid to speak my mind and loudly, <laughs> where I got my nickname in college, which is Megaphone Margie. You know, I did art, I did dance, I even did, I was very interested in Eastern religion. I figured I'm going to spend my life in art, so I want a well-rounded degree. And your art is only as good as your life experiences. When I opened my first studio in Georgetown after I graduated college, I was selling my work for more than my professor was selling his work. The general philosophy of sculptors in wood, and it's very African, is they say they let the spirit out of the wood. One of the reasons I like wood so much is it talks to you. It changes depending on how you carve it. It changes with the grain. You know, artists have been creating figurative sculpture forever. But the thing I did that was different than anybody else was that I made female bodies under glass that were cocktail tables. I was doing things that male woodworkers were not doing. They, they didn't carve human bodies under glass. Nobody trains to own a gallery, really. Well, we can start showing him the objects. So I was good in business. And, you know, my father taught me, you know, everything I know about business and promotion. I mean, I basically get 2,000 artists a year who send me their art to look at. I mean, you know, most of it I don't like. When I take on an artist, this artist has to knock my socks off and has to give me an artgasm, which I can show you what an artgasm is if you like. <laughs> I like the unusual. I like people who come up with a technique that nobody's ever thought of before. So we do a lot of three-dimensional mixed media. Um, but I also have really fine painters. They say I want my art well-crafted and my craft well-arted. I am not into sloppy. This is a very complicated piece. Well, Steven Hansen um, is one of the artists I've shown for 45 years. He's basically a self-taught artist. About 12 years ago, um, and this is my funny line about this, when the Supreme Court actually made decent decisions, they made a decision that parody is not copy. So he can take any painting that was ever painted. As long as he has his characters, it's fine. And the amazing part of these, he paints them. They're not photographs. They're not photostats. He actually paints these. Yeah. So this one's called A Bar at the Follies Bergere um, by Manet. And it's in the London Museum. And it's an amazing painting in and of itself. The part you don't realize is that so, if you see the painting in person, it's a mirror. So some of this, like this part, is the people behind it. So he's painting the reflection of it. And, uh, and it's, a, you know, this was a complicated piece to paint. 
And, um, and then, you know, the guy's so pleased with himself now that he's finished painting it, he's having some champagne, which is, of course, in the painting. Well, this is a Magritte, and um, it's called Clairvoyance. And the kind of theme of this is, you know, he's, the, the painter is painting the egg, and he's painting the chicken. And it's sort of like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And this guy's kind of looking at him like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> and so every detail he does, even the, the guy's hair, you know, I mean, he, he just really does an amazing job. You know, one of the things I say is, I don't do anything particularly depressing. Um, I figure if you want to be depressed, read the news, watch the news, talk to your friends and family, but you're not going to find it here. I want people to feel uplifted. I have a glasses case. These could be useful. <laughs> Want me to cut them in half? No, Just yeah, kidding. Sure <laughs> One of my clients is the National Association of Home Builders, and they put out a statistic that said within five years, 50% of all carpenters are going to be retiring. It is the most endangered trade in this country and in Europe. We wrote a grant to build a mobile wood shop. This is spinning this way. And to train a new generation of carpenters. Whoa, that's so good. What we often do is teach young kids how to turn things on a lathe, which they just adore doing. But I just felt that most schools don't have wood shops anymore. And these, they need a trade. I mean, I know the percentage of kids that went to college from my high school, 98%. There isn't one school in the city would it, that would even come close to that. Tonight there's classes here in our stationary wood shop. It was just something that I really had wanted to do and felt there was a need for the city. We really built something. Now we're helping a lot of students.